We have identified autumn period as a difficult time of the year due to dry climate conditions to finish lambs or even run lambs for full stop. So we have designed a trial to uh, see if we can maximise both profit and productivity by running lambs on fodder beet with a conjunction of adding meadow hay and fodder beet and the likes to ensure they have a balanced diet. So we have three mobs for this trial. One is a grass control, identifying what a normal farming system would do with, by running lambs on grass through the autumn. Second mob is a mob on fodder beet and meadow hay. And then the third mob is fodder beet and pea hay. The, with the theory that the pea hay being a slightly higher crude protein product will mean the lambs will grow slightly better than on the meadow hay ones. The three main mobs of lambs were weighed in uh, every two weeks in intervals so we can sh show a growth curve of how those animals performed on the three different diets. As you can see by the, the first graph of the lambs on the control we had a, very, a big variation in their growth rates with exceptional growth for the first two weeks and then due to autumn mill thrift with worm burdens and the likes we have a decline and then it comes back up again after a drench and we see a huge variation in, in the first mob of lambs on the grass control. The second mob is the lambs on fodder wheat and meadow hay. As you can see, both for this mob and the meadow, the pea hay mob, we had a slight decline um, for the first two weeks of on the fodder wheat. Now this is just through transitioning on the fodder wheat, getting used to eating bulbs and, and getting adjusted to a, a different diet. From there we see a, a slight increase in it, in it, although we didn't get a, a huge growth of what we were hoping for, the lambs average around 100 grams a day, just slightly below. The second graph here we show the, the variation in the, in the production of the grass versus the fodder beet, the two main feed sources for the lambs. As we can see the first five months of the, the period were extremely dry, so up until February we saw average to poor growth rates on the grass of ranging about 20 kilos a day. Now the fodder beet was converting moisture slightly better and was doing 80 kilos of dry matter a day. From here we managed to get some rain which was showed a huge increase for the fodder beet. We jumped up to 200 kilos of dry matter a day where the, fodder, the grass only managed to get up to about 30 kilos of dry matter a day. From here the, both continued on pretty well with from mid-May through to end of June the ones on uh, the fodder beet managed to keep trucking on about 114 kilos of dry matter a day which is pretty exceptional and whereby the, the grass carried on it's 20 to 30 kilos. So by the end of the from November through to end of June we managed to see the fodder beet grew a total tonnage of around 27 tonne of dry matter to the hectare where the grass averaged five and a half tonne of dry kilos of dry matter to the hectare. So as we can see there's a huge difference in terms of carrying capacity by the amount of production we'll produce. As we can see the grass control mob averaged a little bit over a thousand dollars a hectare in terms of revenue per hectare, that's net revenue per hectare, where the extreme of the fodder beet and pea hay yielded just over four thousand three hundred dollars a hectare which we're wrapped with. Along with that there was a twelve hundred kilos of live weight produced in the on the trial period. So by the end of the trial we were absolutely wrapped with the end result, especially given the season of being such a dry early autumn and then a bit of rain at the end of it. So to, to exceed both 1200 kilos of live weight per hectare and 4000 plus dollars per hectare we were absolutely wrapped. So we'll certainly be looking at implementing it again for next season.